Man, I wish we'd had this when I was in school. So many students nowadays are learning and using PowerPoint to do reports. What a great tool. We figured it'd be fun to get you in, uh, get in an expert here to show you how to jazz up your PowerPoint presentations. Using something I didn't even know was in PowerPoint, the draw tool. Professor PowerPoint is here. He's the author of Teach Yourself PowerPoint 2003 in 24 hours, Tom Bunzel. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. Thanks for having me Good back. to have you on. Cool. I didn't even know there was a draw tool. A lot of people don't know it. It's down here at the bottom of the uh, screen usually. Yeah. And if it's not, you can get it with view toolbars. So it, where, do, where do you click on the bottom of the screen to show that? Well, if it's not open, you would go Oh, I see. You have toolbars. to open the toolbar. Yeah, it's, it. it's there by default. Oh, so that's what that thing is at the bottom, yeah. the so, auto shapes thing. Okay. Exactly. Well, auto shape is just part of it. Yeah. So we'll go through it. What I did here was I brought in a picture using the insert picture command down okay. here. And you know, when you bring a picture in, it's static. There's not a whole lot you can do with it. Right. So I want to introduce the drawing toolbar by using some components to point to things in the picture. Okay. So first I'm going to do an arrow. I'm going to hold, you have trouble drawing a straight line? Yes. Okay, you draw, hold down the shift key. Hold the shift key. And you draw a straight line. And it does it. And it does it. You make it thicker. Okay. And you change the line color. It's white now, so we can't really see it. Yeah, exactly. So, so make it darker. Dark line. Okay. And now oh, look, that, it has an arrowhead that on it. Even. That thing's pointing at it. Yeah. Now, down here, you mentioned the auto shapes. This yeah. is where all the gold is. Uh, this is where all the cool stuff is. And what I want to look at is a call out. Call outs look like pointers to things. Oh, it's like in a comic book where they put the. Yeah, the... Exactly. Well, you can use one of those. Yeah. So let's use one of those. And we'll point, we'll drag one out. And we'll point to, like, uh, Texas. And I could type that in. I'll just start typing. Okay. So what you're using is these techniques to draw your listeners' attention to particular information on, right. the, on the slide. Right, and as we did last time, I'm going to animate these as the slide comes oh. up so we can point, point, point. Right. So let me show you one more. Yeah. And I'm going to use the oval down here, and I'm going to use the shift again. This is it's going to draw a circle. So shift forces the oval to be a circle. Exactly, okay. or a rectangle to be a square. Okay. And I can make the border a little bit thicker again, and th this time I'm going to make it empty. I'm going to take the fill color tool and make no fill. No fill. That means it's just a circle. Exactly. And I'll make, uh, a, col I'll make a better color for that, too. Dark. Let's make it, like, red. Okay. And open up the colors. Now we have a red circle. Well, let's see. I, we have a red I, something. You know what? I didn't use the line color tool. I used, oh, the, I used the, the text, text color tool. tool. So the text will be so red. So Professor PowerPoint made a mistake there. Never. Never. But there, right. now I got it red. Now it's a red okay. circle. So let's animate these. Okay? All and right. let's make them come in. So I'm going to... Select that arrow and go to custom animation and enter and make it enter with a dissolve. So what will happen is the, 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 the map will appear first and then you're going to slowly yeah, the, point out features exactly. of the map. So let's just, I've got two of them animated, so let's show it. It's often the case when you have something, you want to give them the overview first, but then call their attention to certain parts yeah, so of then it. So the map's up, I didn't animate the circle. So right. we know the DC is right there. Okay, yeah. but now I can point and say tomorrow we got California voting. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. And then the next day, Texas, Texas may vote. I don't know. I love it. And, and by the by, by dissolving in, you can time so, your speak speaking. Exactly. Hit those points. Hit the just, points. And if you're a teacher, like we're talking about, or, yeah, or you give it a student. class report, yeah. you can do that. Now, what I want to do next is I want to make a complete diagram with this stuff. Okay. Fairly quickly. So you don't have to start with a picture. You can actually draw your own. Exactly. And that that's the real cool thing is I want to stress that with this. You make a PowerPoint presentation that's entirely your own, completely right. unique, right. really enhances creativity. So I would, let's make this one for call for help. And right. I'm going to make a, I'm gonna make a rectangle. You pick the rectangle. And I'm going to type your name in it. Okay. And I'm going to pick an arrow. And I'm going to draw it out. So we're going to do an organizational chart kind sort of thing? Sort of flow chart, but we'll make it more freeform. Okay. And we'll do some clip art. It comes with a lot of good clip Exactly. Art. So let's take a look at this. I'm already searching for phone because you do phones. So I'm going to drag a little phone yeah, out here Leo, for you. Phone call. Got it. And I like how we can resize the clip art sure. arbitrarily. And even with the clip art, you can type on it. Oh, neat. Cool. Okay. Yeah. And now, of course, I can animate this. And I want to do it for one specific reason because I'm going to show you a really cool trick. If I animate this one with the dissolve and I animate... First, you have to select them. Then you pick your effect, right? Okay. Now, I've added effects to those two. Yeah. Now, if I select these two by drawing a little rectangle around them, yeah. now they're both selected. Yeah. If I hold down that control key, I clone these out, and they become duplicates. Oh. So not only have I cloned the actual objects for consistency, but I've also cloned the animation effects. The transitions are also So they're already, if I put a transition, uh, the dissolve in here, then I would have perfect order already set right. up. 
And this shows the order here with the one, two, three, and four. You exactly. know how they're going to appear as you exactly. press the space bar of the arrow key to go right. to the next part of the slide. Now, I want to play with a couple other things. Now, if you want to straighten these things out, you would select those, and you would go draw, align, and distribute. And now you can align them by center. Or so, now, okay, now see, I always get that wrong. So it's not centering it on the page. It's centering, it's right. aligning the, the centers well of the boxes. Right. Yeah, if you look through that dialog box, it's a little bit confusing. But if you I go, see the word center, I figure it's yeah, centering it. It yeah. says align center. It shows you here the sort of a diagram kind of how it's going to work. Kind of the center of the yeah. object. And what you're, what you're asking about is relative to slide. Got it. And so if I had that you, checked. You usually wouldn't do that. Okay, got okay? it. Got it. And so now you can begin to build a little chart like this. And if you, if, if you want to change this one, all you do is draw and change this auto shape. Pick another, go back into this auto shape area. Pick an, pick an appropriate shape. Oh, and that's going to be for cat. And that's going to be for cat. Well, you're way ahead of me. I, can, I know where you're going here. Okay, <laughs> I can make that pink, oh, right? Because she's pink today. There yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. And I might change her text color and so on, and, get, and then I can make one for Roger. But what I want to show you is, so now we have a flow chart here. Right. What I want to show you is one of my favorite tricks. If you've got a, a slide that's filled with objects like this, and you yeah. want to reuse them, yeah. and you want to kind of break it up, you go insert duplicate slide. So you copy the slide. You copy the entire slide, and now you can make like a sequence. So, for example, for, go back to your slide. I can get rid of the cat stuff because it's going to be in the next slide anyway and simply change the layout up here to add some bullets. So now I can talk about your particular process. Okay. And this, you know, this is the way you basically can tell a story, as we talked about last time. So you're, in effect, building this story and you're using these techniques to speed up your design. You speed know? up my design yeah. and be a little bit more creative. And, yeah. you know, i just scratching the surface here. Here you've got clip art. Here you've got picture. You've got this en entire auto shape Can you area. suggest a way that students should think about this or present presenters should think about it ahead of time? What's nice is you already knew in your head kind of where you were going. Right. Here. Is it a good idea to kind of sketch out that ahead of time? Well, one of the ways you can use PowerPoint is, is to sketch out other kinds of projects, right. like as a storyboard. You can also use, I, I think if you're going to work with text, the outline tool. Just work in the outline, and yeah. then later you could dress yeah, because up. Because, look, the... if, I, if I put a title in this slide, if I work in the outline view, Yeah. Whatever I type in the outline is already reflected in the slide. Neat. And then once you, once you begin to, you know, what kids need to learn also is the hierarchy. So you've got a title and then you've got a bullet. Right. And you can promote the bullet to be a title or demote the bullet. And I do that with a tab or a shift tab. So, so usually you just enter in and everything, not kind of thinking about the hierarchy, but then you can rearrange to make it reflect yeah, a storyline. Exactly. And you can use the outline to drag your ideas around. You can use your slides. Or, of course, my favorite area is down here in the slide sorter view to see a complete, you know, Then you get a real good idea of where you're and, going. And, and, yeah. and uh, you know, drag stuff around. Professor PowerPoint is Tom Bunzel. He is the guy. And this is the book. It's a great book. If you missed anything we covered today, find the instructions on our website, techtv.com slash call for help. And the book is Help Yourself. I'm sorry, Teach Yourself, Microsoft Office, PowerPoint 2003 in 24 hours. And I think in six minutes you did a pretty good job. Well, thank you. <laughs> Teaching us quite a bit.